In this video, I'm going to give you an honest review of this GOG desoldering gun. This has got a soldering iron and a suction pump in it. So the idea is you let the solder melt for a minute and it sucks up into this compartment and then you empty this compartment. And I'll cut straight to the chase. It's good. It's worked well for about a year now. No problems. Easy to clean. It comes supplied with these things that are you're meant to push into the hole here while it's still hot to make sure that it doesn't get clogged up. As long as you do that while it is still hot, it's remained unblocked for me. I made a video reviewing various desoldering pumps, you know, handheld ones like this, and it was a throwaway video and it's ended up being my most popular video by far. You know, at the time of making this, it's got like 25,000 views, which is more than twice as many views as any of the videos I make about my core content, which is fixing multi-track cassette recorders. And uh, a lot of the comments there are a criticism because I didn't actually demonstrate the unit. Uh, so on the off chance that this video also becomes popular, don't worry folks, I'm going to show it in use in a minute. I don't have the original box, so it's not an unboxing or anything, but it's just a plain white cardboard box. It was well packaged inside. Um, there was a little pamphlet in uh, questionable English, but you know, there's not a lot to understand right here really. You turn the heat to where you want it to be. You leave it on for a bit. That little light, light turns red when it's hot enough. Obviously you would sit it in this sturdy stand while it was heating up. And then um, when you press this, then it's going to suck air in through an inlet here and through this section so the soldier gets sucked up through here and it collects in this little chamber and then you can remove that and you can see there is a little bit of soldier in there at the moment and it's probably due a clean but yep it's very easy it's very easy to use now i can't say that i've been using it loads and loads because for me a lot of the time I'm working with single-sided PCBs and for that it's in a, in a way it's just easier to use my usual method which is you know MG Chemical Super Wick and my standard soldering iron so like I've got a Weller WSD-80 just out of shot there. Here's the sort of typical single-sided board I'd be working on and for that I'm just uh, putting the, the wick over there I think the soldering iron that will soak it up very nicely. And that's the quickest way for me to work. If there's larger solder joints, like for power cables and stuff, then I will use this uh, Weller desoldering pump. It blocks up a little bit more quickly than the generic one, but then it's got this kind of silicon tip which doesn't melt too much. So um, I've ended up using this the most out of the three that I reviewed in a previous video. But very occasionally I will come across a board like this. So this is the control board for the 246. Tascam 246 and it's double sided. It's a thicker board and the LANs actually have like a little tunnel going through the board and it's much, much more labor intensive to use this method um, to get components out of there. So when I bought this, I bought it in the hope that it was going to make that process a lot easier and it definitely does. So I paid, I think, £108 in total. So I think it was like £80 plus £10 postage and packaging, plus I had to pay VAT. I ended up not paying any import duty and it was sent from China. I think you can get this in places like Banggood and AliExpress and so on. And there will be people actually importing it into your region and selling it directly from the mainland. I was happy enough to wait an extra whatever it was, a fortnight for it to come from China. So I, I did have the presence of mind to make some footage of me first time I was using it. Um, I was testing it out on another double side board which is from a TX144. So I will show you that footage now. Sorry about the fan noise going on in the background, it's a hot day and um, so here we've got a TX144 control board and recapping. Here's the desolderer. How do you even say, say that? Go GOG. It's 993A. So it's already heated up. I've got it at 390 degrees centigrade. Maybe you can't see because the light's bright, but that uh, red LED is lit to show that it's heated up. So with standard uh, soldering iron, it would be very difficult to desolder this board because it's double-sided. You can see it's got tracks on both sides. Uh, but I've just done two and it worked pretty well. Um, so 
these two pins here are the ones we want. Push that over, leave it for a second, and then suck it up. Put it on, let it melt for a couple of seconds, and then suck up. Yeah, that's come away nicely. Um, maybe for comparison, I should try and desolder this one with my standard soldering iron. Okay, so my Weller WSD-80 soldering station has heated up. You know, it's a really good soldering station. I'm basically really happy with it. Um, so first I will try and use that with this MG Chemical Super Wick. Move this capacitor here, so it's going to be these two pins. Yeah, so I've applied the heat for a lot longer there, and it's, oh, it's just not really sucked all that much out of it. Let's try again with a fresh bit. Yeah, that capacitor's still kind of stuck in there. Um, we need to heat it up from this side. Yeah, it's still a bit stuck. Okay, so I got there, but you can see that even with like really good materials, expensive desoldering wick and an expensive soldering iron, it's not nearly as fast. You know, incidentally, if I were to do the same thing with single-sided PCB, um, it would be really a lot quicker than that using this method. It's the double-sided nature of the PCB that's slowing it down, and yeah, like uh, this is definitely making that whole process a ton easier. So the only other thing that I'll say to you is that um, I did have to get a plug adapter for this. When it arrived, it came with this kind of Chinese steel pl style plug. Um, so this maybe cost me like a pound off eBay to adapt it so I can use it with my uh, Style of UK plug. But yeah, well built, it's been reliable, it does the job very well. Um, significantly cheaper than anything else that I could find that does the same thing. Doesn't take up too much space. Um, just set it off to the side there and I'll... You know, I'm in quite a small workshop, so pretty happy with it. I can recommend it. Um, I will try to get some links to the product down in the description of the video. Um, if you want to buy it, then I get like a tiny kickback, but it doesn't cost you anything. All right, thanks for watching. Hope to see you again soon.